The Jesus Timeline Part 3, and the hits just keep on coming. To review what we've covered in the first two parts of this series, it's quite a mess resolving the conflicts between all the different Gospel accounts and what we know of ancient history of the time. To begin, let's start with Luke's Jesus in purple there, who was born during the administration of Governor Quirinius of Syria, during the census that was performed, which would put his birth date somewhere around 6 AD. Luke tells us that John the Baptist started his ministry around 29 AD and gives us some political events around the arrest of John the Baptist. Luke's Jesus would have been about 30 at the time that he began his ministry, and he began his ministry after John the Baptist was arrested. And given the political events that are described in Luke, we can conclude that John the Baptist would have been arrested somewhere around 35 or 36 AD. The problem is that Pontius Pilate was recalled to Rome in 36 AD. And that means that Jesus would have had months, not years, to have completed his ministry. But the Gospel of John provides us with three different Passovers, which means that Jesus' ministry would have had to have lasted two to three years in order to be consistent with John's Gospel. Now Matthew's Jesus was born much earlier. King Herod the Great died in the early part of 4 BC, and that means that if we take the December 25th date seriously as the date that Jesus was born, if we do, then that means that the very earliest Jesus could have been born would have been 5 BC, maybe 4 BC if you decide not to take the December 25th date seriously. Now, John's Gospel provides us the most specific dates with regards to the crucifixion of Jesus. John specifically mentions uh, that the age of the temple at the time that Jesus has his temple tantrum. So that means the temple tantrum would have occurred around 26 AD and since there were three Passovers mentioned that means that Jesus's crucifixion would have been in 28 AD. Now Matthew's Jesus, assuming that the age that Luke gives us, about 30, is correct and if we assume that there were two to three Passovers during the course of Jesus's ministry then that means the age of Jesus would have made the dates fairly consistent with John's Gospel. But unfortunately, neither John nor Matthew's Gospel would have been consistent with the dates that Luke provides us regarding John the Baptist. Now some new problems have arisen with a verse in the Bible that was pointed out to me by the League of Reason, specifically John chapter 8 verse 57. Now as we mentioned before, Luke chapter 3 verse 23 suggests that Jesus was about 30 years of age when he started his ministry, maybe the late 20s if we want to be uh, add in a few fudge factors here as to what about 30 means. John's Gospel, on the other hand, has a much older Jesus. And the Jews said unto him, Thou art not yet 50 years old. So Jesus was close to 50 when he started his ministry? Well, maybe he was in his mid-40s and only looked older. In any event, one wonders what the young Jesus did with his time, considering that he had not yet started his ministry. If Jesus didn't begin his ministry until his 30s or his 50s, what was he doing with all his downtime during his youth? The excuses that Christians provide as to why we don't have any of the writings of Jesus or we get none of the teachings of Jesus straight from the horse's mouth is Jesus just didn't have any time, considering that he was traveling, he was preaching, he was performing miracles, and so forth. And so that task had to be delegated to his followers. But if Jesus really was the avatar of God, didn't he have enough foresight to realize that future generations might appreciate having his teachings come straight from him as opposed to from eyewitness accounts who contradicted each other? In any event, this is a side issue, but something I wonder about nonetheless. Getting back to the subject, we need to update the timeline. Now since John's Jesus was very old, that means that he would have been born somewhere around 20 BC. This would not have been too early for King Herod the Great, but it would have been too early for Quirinius. Even if we add in some fudge factors and assume that Quirinius must have had some earlier administration in Syria, for which, by the way, there is no evidence, the very earliest career point that we have for Quirinius is 14 BC when he was the governor of Crete. So consequently, 20 BC is just too early for Quirinius of Syria. Now, both John's Jesus and Matthew's Jesus are too early for John the Baptist, considering that Luke tells us that John the Baptist didn't even begin his ministry until 29 AD. Speaking of John the Baptist, there are also some inconsistencies as to whether Jesus started his ministry before or after the arrest of John the Baptist. Matthew says in chapter 4, verse 12, When Jesus heard that John was cast into prison, he departed into Galilee. 
And Mark says in chapter 1, verse 14, Now after that John was put into prison, Jesus came into Galilee. But John's gospel tells us that Jesus began his ministry before John was put into prison. John chapter 3, verse 24, for John was not yet put into prison. And given the context of the earlier chapters, Jesus had already started gathering disciples, had his temple tantrum, and a conversation with Nicodemus, and so consequently had apparently already started his ministry while John the Baptist was still free. So I guess the question is for the Christians, how do you reconcile all of these different gospel accounts remembering that there are no errors in the Bible. We're talking about the inerrant word of God here. Good luck!